The Philippines is endowed with tremendous natural resources. The 7,107 Islands Archipelago is rich in water, biodiversity, fertile lands, forests, minerals, and has great diversity of ecosystems. In particular, the mineral wealth the Philippines is staggering. Its mineral deposits have been estimated to be worth $840 billion to $1.4 trillion. Oh, we have uh, major metals being mined in the country. Uh, gold, copper, nickel, chromite, and to a lesser extent, iron. This abundant natural wealth, if properly managed, could fund programs that address environmental degradation and reduce poverty. There's a general feeling in government that we are not getting enough. So right now, the data that we have and does not give us a true picture of the contribution of mining to the country. We really see that we need to do a, a, a real evaluation of full cost accounting so that we are able to do an actual costing of the social environment and economic impacts of mining. So you see both the benefits and the cost. And you also then all do an accounting of what are the economic activities that are likely to be done in the area so that government, in terms of its planning and decision making, is properly guided. In July 2012, the government of the Philippines decided to take action. It issued Executive Order 79, which provides policy reforms to increase revenues from mining industry and promotes responsible mining. Responsible mining uh, means meeting the needs of three pillars. One is that if you have a mining project, it must significantly contribute to the economy. Second is about the environment. If you are allowed to do mining, your mining project must be able to remediate the impact on the environment. Also, addressing the post-mining land use of the area so that in the overall, land use of the area continues from the pre-mining land use to the mining estates as a temporary land use and to the, the post-mining estates which is the permanent land use of the area after mining. And the third is the social. Every mining project must be able to significantly contribute to the social development of the host communities so that even if mining is gone, that community will, will still be, will be self-reliant so you don't produce ghost, ghost towns, just like what happened before. The Philippines Poverty Environment Initiative, led by the Department of the Interior and Local Government, works to increase government's share from natural resource revenue. 40% of the revenues from the extraction and development of natural resources should be shared to local government units. The program also improves government's ability to release revenues to local government so that they can better plan their spending for social services and environmental protection. PEI is a welcome uh, development in the sense that we're looking for a way by which these endeavors or say mining and the benefits from it are directly utilized by the local governments and the communities to promote sustainable development. And we are encouraging local government units to shift to a more environment-friendly sources of energy, such as the windmill in Ilocos Norte, the solar power, geothermal and hydropower. We feel that uh, improving transparency and accountability in the payment and revenues of government and of whatever the companies pay and, and what the government receives, both national and local, uh, will be a good step towards slowly building that uh, trust among the communities, the indigenous people and the government itself. Toledo in the province of Cebu and municipality of Clubber in Surigao del Norte are hosting responsible mining activities and funds have reached the local government and are contributing to poverty reduction and environmental protection. We are mining on this portion now and on this portion here. And this is the city of Toledo. We uh, receive excise tax from the Carmen Copper Corporation, almost 69 million pesos and then we put that in our projects. Our city now, it looks like a city. Oh yes, of course, they're very, they're indeed happy. In fact, almost 4,500 work to the company. 
like it because they give work to the people. Well, we have also 18 hectares for our poorest for the poor, our urban poor. Now we are giving a title, a 50 per square, square meter. Because of mining revenues, the municipality of Toledo has now funds to finance green schools, organic agriculture ventures, and composing initiatives. It will bring you to our newly constructed buildings and our Goliath. They have their own vegetable garden. And this is about on the preservation of our ecosystem. All are, are natural. Now this is uh, organic farming. And after they harvest the projects, they will feed those malnourished children and for the uh, feeding of the schools. The students are sent out to the community to test the importance of biodiversity. We know that we, the youth, is the only future. Marlon Saison is the barangay chief of Puno. He is a tribal leader and a chemical engineer. Thanks to the increased budget of the barangay, he has launched a number of green initiatives. Backyard gardens, using biomass, creating organic fertilizer out of mines waste, or converting a dump site into an eco-agricultural park have drastically reduced malnutrition. In the municipality of Glaver, the increase in the municipal budget due to taxes paid by mining companies allowed for the construction, among other, of a municipal park, health center, school, and water management systems. Doctor, police officer, computer engineering, naging teacher, nurse. Mining activities have always been a great generators of revenue. And if we can have such revenue, government can use it for green activities. And that is the reason why uh, foremost in the agenda is raising share of government from mining revenues so that we can have more of those wealth to be used by the, by the government. The Philippines Poverty Environment Initiative helps establishing the right policies, regulations, transparency, and accounting system in place so that the revenues from Philippines' rich and natural resources can propel the country into a sustainable development path.